Hello my friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am so excited you're here with me today. We are going to be making seven really cute little springtime note cards. Today's video is kind of an interesting one. It's a little different than normal. We're not making a fun fold. What I did is I cut several pieces of basic white cardstock at three by four and a half. That's what I'm stamping on. And I picked out a select set of products to use. So I am using lots of different Stampin' Blends. This is my holder for my Stampin' Blends. It's just a Target basket. It's nothing special. special. Um, and I'm going underneath these little guys with a smoky slate marker to give them some something to stand on so they look like they're on a ground. I use soft suede ink to stamp all the hedgehogs. I didn't change any of my colors as I go throughout this process. And I used Highland Heather ink to stamp the butterflies. And then I change it up with a lot of Stampin' Blends. So we're just gonna talk about um, cards and we are gonna have a really relaxing, um, story time hangout session here today. So if you're new to my channel, um, some of my videos are very uh, technique or um, fun fold heavy and there's lots of information, lots of details about how to fold a card or things like that. But every once in a while I have videos like this that are just a little more chill, like grab your cup of coffee, hang out with me, we're gonna visit, we're gonna talk about a few different things, and we're gonna color, and I will jump back and forth between the card making and the um, story time is what we call it around here for, for those of you who are new. Um, and the biggest thing is that we're gonna do is I want to really encourage you I was in a little bit of a rut, okay? So sometimes what happens is when you're a content creator, you get this like thing that happens to you where you feel like everything's been done. Like everything's been done to death. Nothing I'm doing is new. Why would people wanna watch this video? You know, that kind of thing. Like you get in your head about what you're creating. And when that happens, I find the best thing to do is to go back to the basics. And the beauty of going back to the basics is especially for those of you who are maybe brand new to card making or stumbled upon this video randomly, this video is gonna show you how, honestly, you can create beautiful cards and beautiful projects with ease um, with just a few, a few, items. So the stamp set I'm using today is the Happy Hedgehog stamp set, which does come in a bundle. You can purchase it in a bundle and get a punch that coordinates with the hedgehog. I opted to not even use the punch today. I wanted to just sit and create. My desire was to sit and do a little bit of coloring and create a pack of note cards that I could give away to a friend or a family member um, for spring not for any special occasion, no, not for a birthday, just because it's nice to be nice, which is kind of the sentiment um, that I just stamped. It says, it's so nice of you to be so nice. And so um, this stamp set is just really cute. I love the little hedgehogs. I love the sentiments. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of sit and create some really basic stuff using just a few products. So that's what we're doing. So really quick, let's talk a little bit more about the cards. Stampin' Up! sells note cards and envelopes. These come in a pack of 20 and they are a finished card size of three and a half by five and then the envelopes come with them. So if you are new to stamping or even if you aren't, they are really great little thing to have in your arsenal for things like this when you just want to make something really simple and cute and you don't want to do a bunch of layering you don't you know it's just like one of those things oh you know what let me just grab my note card pack and I'm just gonna make a few note cards maybe it's because you have limited time I feel like 
our note cards and envelopes, and when I say are, I'm referring to Stampin' Up! because I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So um, I feel like their note cards and envelopes are the perfect thing to kind of have in your stash for quick, cute, easy creations uh, such as this. So I just encourage you to have a set on hand, even if you're an avid stamper and you craft all the time, having a set of these on hand to create really simple, quick cards is a fantastic um, option. So anyway, now we're on, we're already finished with card two. We're going to have a little story time because that is one of my favorite things about hanging out with you guys on Saturdays. My Saturday videos are really a little bit more laid back. They're more about me catching up with you, telling you about life, sharing some creativity, and just, you know, hanging out. So what's been going on? Um, really nothing new. Like there's nothing specific new that is happening. Um, we've had a couple of interesting things happen this week. So. <laughs> One of them is our puppy Skeeter. She is 10 months old, actually, as of yesterday. So the day you're watching this, um, she turned today. So today that I'm recording this is February 25th. And so she's 10 months old. And um, she, I, yesterday, okay, let me, I have to rewind. All right. So yesterday I worked all day and then, and when I say yesterday, I'm referring to Thursday. Okay. Thursday I worked all day and I went to, in the afternoon, I went to a friend's house. She's actually a lovely stamper. She lives about 15 minutes from me because she got one of those machines that cuts, um, like wood. It's like the laser machines. They are called like, there's some of them that are called a glow forge. Hers is called a make block. And I was really interested in seeing how it worked because I, I considered getting one for my own use for team gifts and stuff like that, or like special gifts for customers or, you know, different things. Instead of buying different gifts, I could just engrave them and personalize them. And so I thought, you know, I want to see how this works. I want to see what it entails. So I made a plan for her to, with her to go to her house around four o'clock on Thursday. So Thursday afternoon, I had to pick my kid up from school along with two of her friends. We came home and then I took off around three 30 and went up to Chris's house. So I was at Chris's until about seven and we had the best time. She had projects planned for me to make so I could really see how the machine worked. And I'll tell you about the machine in a minute. And we had a really great time creating together and the projects she um, created were absolutely adorable. And so it did kind of make me want to get the machine. Okay, so there's the first part. So then taking you guys back, if you watched my previous videos, you know that I have gone to this little, I don't know what it's called, like not retreat, but like a, every Thursday night, my friend's church is holding for eight weeks. They're holding like a deep in your relationship with Christ kind of seminar seminar. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so she is Catholic. I am not. And so many of you have been so sweet in your comments saying like, oh, I converted to Catholicism when I was an adult and all of that. I personally am very settled in my choices and I don't feel the need to convert into a different religion, but I never think there's anything wrong with listening and knowing more about other religions or exploring, you know, those types of things, especially if they're rooted in the Bible and they're rooted in God. And this is, it's very much rooted in God. And it's been very, um, it's been a really, really beautiful, fun experience. So that started at seven o'clock in Jackson, which is a solid 30 minute drive from my friend Chris's house. So I was supposed to leave Chris's at 630, 
but we were having so much fun. We totally lost track of time getting everything finished. And finally I was like, oh my gosh, I totally have to go. It's, it's seven and this thing is already starting. So my friend Carrie texted me and she said, hey, are you coming tonight? Because it's seven o'clock and I'm not there. And I texted her back and said, I will be there at 7.30. I'm sorry I'm running late. I, you know, I'll be there soon. And Carrie's the best person to be late for because she is always late. We have this joke in my family, like about my Aunt Linda, that she's going to be late to her own funeral. The woman is always late everywhere for everything. And so Carrie's kind of the same way. She really struggles being on time. And I don't know if you have people like this in your life, but I just accept those things about people. It doesn't make me angry. I don't feel like they need to fix their issue of being late. It's just who they are. And you're not going to ever change that about somebody. So I just accept it and feel like, hey, you know, I just know that that is how that person is. I, however, am not that person. I generally am either on time or a little bit early because it bothers me to be late. Specifically when I'm attending like dinner at somebody's house or something, I'll be really honest, I kind of feel like it's rude. Like if somebody tells you to be at their house at six and you don't show up till seven, I feel like that's rude because somebody has taken the time to cook for you and gone out of their way to like host you and I don't want to disrespect anybody's time. Now, that being said, I recognize that people who are habitually late do not look at it that way. So if you are one of those people and you are feeling offended or attacked, please do not because it is not intended that way from me. And I know that people who are habitually late do not have that intent with being late. It's just who they are. So anyway, I digress. We're going to move forward from this discussion. Uh, really quick back to this card here I'm just creating like a little grassy area because I want it to look like this tree is kind of like you know growing out of the grass and I wanted to extend it on the sides I felt like it would look weird to just leave that one little patch of grass down there at the bottom so I just kind of went with up and down movements or um, swipes to kind of create that cute little grass and then I recognized this sentiment is not gonna fit on this card the way I stamped this tree because I stamped the tree right in the middle. So the double oval punch is wonderful and it is definitely like to me a tool that everybody should have in their arsenal and it's great for a new crafter because it allows you to make sentiments that are layered that have a really nice look to them without um, I guess like let me see how I want to say this without like a lot of cost, right? Because dies and die cutting machines can be expensive. So here's how the die layer, the, the double oval layer punched out. And then I took my um, blends, my Stampin' Blends, and I colored all around the front of this so that it would be colored without having to use a colored cardstock. So this is a way that you can get colored cardstock essentially without having colored cardstock. Does that make sense? So anyway, having white cardstock and stamp and blend markers is really a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal. Okay, let's go back to the story times. So um, I can't even remember where I was at with my story. I don't know if you guys heard the door open while I was recording but my husband's home today. So I knew at some point during this video that him or my daughter would open the door and like look their head in to see if I, <laughs> I don't know why they can't just look through the window and see that I'm recording. For some reason they have to open the door, which then makes a bunch of noise. So I don't get it. Anyways, um, I digress from that as well. So Back to, oh, the late thing. So I finally show up at the event. It was 7.30 and I get there. There, The talk was already happening, which thankfully it was, it's like on screens. So like 
TV screens that we watch. So it's not like I'm interrupting somebody actually talking. So I just kind of snuck in quietly. And my sweet friend Carrie had already made me a plate of dinner, which I was super thankful for because I was starving by the time I got there because I don't eat late at night. Like we usually have dinner at like 4, 430 because my husband, well, 435 because my husband works and he, when he gets home from work, he's usually starting because he gets up so early to go to work and his lunches are early, blah, blah, blah. So 7.30 at night for lunch for me or for dinner for me is really late. So I was super hungry and her and her husband had made the dinner for a hundred people that night. And it was chicken parmesan and baked ziti and Caesar salad and French bread. And you guys, oh my lanta. It was amazing. So really, really enjoyed um, having dinner and listening to the rest of the talk. And then we have like open discussion at the table. And that is really nice. I, you know, I'm a very outgoing person, but I have learned over the years that sometimes it's better to sit quiet and learn. So I really try hard to practice that um, when I'm in a group setting now. When I was younger, I did not practice that so well, and I was the one that tended to do the most talking at a table. Um, I'm still one of the ones that like does more of the chit chat, but not anything like when I was younger. Um, so it was interesting. One of the ladies at our table, her son was um, murdered, actually, and she shared that story. and. It was heartbreaking. Like, I couldn't imagine going through that. And she talked about how she's forgiven the perpetrator and she forgave his mother. And I just was so blown away by what an amazing um, woman of faith she was. And hearing her story was so incredible and heartwarming. I just, it was so amazing. Just such a strong um, story of faith. And so anyway, after um, that wrapped up, I went in the back of the church with my friend Carrie to the kitchen area to tell her husband hello and tell him what a delicious dinner he had made. And um, his dad had passed away recently. So I told him I was sorry for his loss. And we stood and talked for a minute. And they had all of these bags of chicken parmesan and baked ziti sitting there. And he was like, do you want to take some of this home? And I was like, no, no, no. You know, give it to some of the people who worked or whatever. Like, I felt kind of weird. But he was like, no, take it. It's fine. You can take it. And I was like, oh okay. So I did. So I took a bag of like a gallon Ziploc bag, not like a little tiny sandwich bag people. So I took that and brought it home, which is so lovely because I will be able to, um, have that for dinner tonight with my family instead of having to cook. So, and by tonight, I mean Friday night. Okay. Cause remember I'm recording this on a Friday. So, um, when I get home, I get home at like 930 at night. I am not a night owl. I have shared this before with you guys. Like, well, wait a minute. I am a night owl in the sense of like, I like to stay up late at night and sleep in in the morning, but I am not a night owl when it comes to being out. First of all, I have night blindness. Do any of you have that? Please tell me if you do, because I'm only 40 years old and I feel like it shouldn't be as bad as it is, but I really get nervous driving at night. So anyway, I got home safe and sound and my husband had had a pretty rough day at work and was feeling pretty frustrated because our puppy, the 10 month old, got a twig stuck in the roof of her mouth. Like, I'm trying to think of how to describe this to you, like side to side. So from like one side of her teeth to the other side of her teeth, it was like wedged, like in the roof of her mouth. So not stabbing into her, into her mouth. It was like the stick was like this perfect size to wedge up in there. (laughs) Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense to you. And her, my husband and my daughter had been working to get this out of her mouth all evening and it was not 
a happy moment. Let me let me just say that. My husband and I both are not known for our patience, and his patience had wore out. Okay, so um, he among other things, like he had had or just a hard day at work and just different things. So he was like, I'm done with it. I cannot. Well, we have um, like an anti-anxiety medication for our little tiny dog. And I said, well, let's give Skeeter some of that to help calm her down and relax her so that we can get into her mouth. Because I knew there, like, she's super hyper. I knew there was no way we were going to get in there if she didn't calm down. So we gave her that and waited a half hour, and she was pretty subdued. And so I got her on the couch with me, and she still got the puppy energy. Like, the, the pill is not a sedative, okay? So it's not like it had her, like, knocked out. It was just took the edge off a little and made her a little bit more chill. So we get her up on the couch, and... This is the weirdest thing, but whenever I do this thing to this dog, she just freezes. And basically, I put my mouth up to her face and I kiss on her, but like little bitty kisses, like really fast. And she just will like stand there and like her eyes close. She's done this for months. I don't know if it's a bonding thing to her or if she, I don't know why it, she does this. But I can get her to be really still and calm and quiet when I do that. So between the medication and me doing that, I just like slipped my hand up into her mouth. And I knew if I could get my finger hooked under the stick that I could probably get it out. And I did. It came out. And my husband was like, really? <laughs> How did you do that? And I'm like, I just have the way. I don't know. But the key, I think, was keeping her quiet and chill while we you know operated <laughs> here I want to just go to the card I used granny apple green for the ground doing that same technique with the swiping up to kind of create grass I'm using pool party for the bird highland heather is for the flowers and soft suede is for the tree trunk. I also used some soft suede on that little hedgehog I colored next to the mushroom so that he would have a little bit darker underbelly and I really love how that turned out. So if you combine soft suede and crumb cake together, that's the look you get. Here I'm just sweeping my pool party uh, blend across the top of the sky to give it a little something because I just don't want it to be stark white and then I'm stamping my sentiment and I will be finished with this card so um I think it's the next card that's one of my favorites here oh yes it's this one so if you take this tree and you stamp it so that um the bottom of the trunk isn't showing you can uh create kind of like this is really pretty floral image and that's what I did with this and then I added my sentiment later so um, I'm just gonna ink it up and go back into those little open spots and add a few more flowers and this is such a great way to stretch your stamps so kind of try to think out of the box with your stamp sets like how could I stamp this image differently to get a totally different look and accomplish something different and then I decided to use Real Red Pumpkin Pie Daffodil Delight, and I think I used Pool Party to color the flowers in kind of a rainbow order. And I don't know why I wanted to color them that way. They just, it, it's just what popped in my head. Um, and I just really love how it turned out. So you could color these all one color. You could color them different colors. It doesn't really matter. Um, but at the end of the day, I absolutely loved how this card came together and it, it is my favorite of all of them. Maybe this one or the mushroom. I'm not sure which, but probably this one. So back to story time. So we get the stick out of Skeeter's mouth and I was relieved because all I could think is I have way too much to do tomorrow, meaning Friday, to have to take this dog to the vet. Like... 
and I don't want her to have to be put under anesthetic because she's young and I know that's what they will want to do because they will have to get inside of her mouth. And so, you know, my head is just all up in the craziness of, please, Lord, let me be able to get this stick out. So we did. And then it wasn't too long after that, we all went to bed and that was that. Husband took today off work Friday. Um, and he had to just go get some routine blood work done. He hasn't been to the doctor or had a checkup of any kind in probably three or four years. And so being the nagging, lovely wife that I am, I am like, you need to do this because I want you to live for a really long time. So we're going to force you to, you know, man up and do the doctor things. So he had to go get his blood work because he has a doctor's appointment coming up. Just all routine stuff. Nothing, nothing's going on. Nothing crazy. Just me being a, a little nag over here. So he'll thank me someday. I'm just saying. So anyway, um, he did that. And then as the time that I am recording this, I have spent all morning chopping vegetables, um, bell peppers, onions, and celery, and making up, and ham, making up bags for jambalaya tomorrow. So we're going to host a get together and have a lot of our friends over. Basically, we invited all of our, our friends, and some are going to be able to come and some aren't. And we're doing two big crock pots full of shrimp jambalaya. I, this is my favorite thing to make. I love making jambalaya. Um, it's a crowd pleaser. It makes a lot. And I literally have never had anyone not like it. It's just delicious. So I bought a second crock pot because I only had one. And one of my husband's complaints when I make jambalaya is that I don't make it spicy enough. And the reason I don't make it spicy enough is because not everybody, A, not everybody can handle spice, right? Some people like it messes their gut up. They can't handle it. B, not everybody likes spice, especially the kids. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to get two crock pots. I'm going to make two crock pots full of jambalaya and I'm going to label one of them hot. And I'll put that one really spicy and the other one will just be mild. So that's what I did this morning. And then I started baking bread. So I'm making six loaves of a rustic bread recipe that I have. And I'm going to then make some desserts this evening that will go kind of with that Louisiana Cajun jambalaya fill. I wanted to make beignets, but I've never made beignets. And my aunt, who's a wonderful baker, said the thing with beignets is you're going to have to make them the day of and kind of like close to the party time because otherwise they won't have the same effect. So I said, forget it then. I can't do beignets because I really want to enjoy myself too. Like <laughs> I don't. And by the way, this get together is literally for no reason. There's no particular reason. We just like doing this. My husband and I both really enjoy hosting and we both enjoy like doing stuff like this. So that's why we're doing it. Um, and we enjoy like treating our friends and like making nice meals for them and stuff like that. So I've decided to make pecan tassies. You tell me, do you say pecan or pecan? In my family, it was pecan. So pecan tassies, um, a pecan bourbon blondie brownie. Both of those I have never made. And then Hello Dolly cookies, which I've made lots of times because I felt like I better have a ringer right? Like I better make, be able to make something that's going to turn out good. And then we're, my daughter is doing a s'mores bar. Here are all the finished cards, by the way, that's what I'm showing you right now. And so, yeah, we plan to have a good old time with some jambalaya and rice and sweets and bread. And I'm sure some wine will be poured and it's going to be great. So tell me what you're doing this weekend. I've asked a lot of you in this video. I want to know what you're doing. I want to know how you say pecans. <laughs> like, I've asked you all kinds of questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not my traditional, you know, sharing a project sheet and all of that, but I needed a little break and I thought, hey, maybe you did too. And now we're caught up and we're hanging out and I had a great time. 
Uh, if you need any of these products, shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com and go check out my blog for more photos. Bye-bye.